Section 3 Loading and Querying Weather Data. This section is a chance for us to work through some code. Uh, it's an opportunity to see all of the things that we've learned in the previous sections put into practice. So specifically we're going to look at how we could start to build a data pipeline that grabs weather data, stores it in MongoDB and pull it out again in a format that, that makes sense to us. I should say that this example is inspired by work that I've done in the past when I was working as a data scientist for UNICEF. In that case we were interested in the spread of uh, mosquito-borne diseases and that in turn is influenced by weather patterns. Mosquitoes have a particular temperature and humidity that, that mean that they breed more which increases uh, the risk of the spread of disease. So my intention here is to really give you a realistic example of something that data set that you would like to query and analyze and where the kinds of tools that we've been learning about can really come in useful. More specifically, we're going to look at how we can grab data by making requests from the Open Weather API. Once we've learned how to make a single request, we're going to see how we can acquire that data systematically and talk about a couple of the potential pitfalls for working with open APIs. We will ingest that weather data into MongoDB before building some aggregation pipelines to try and extract useful information from the data that we've, that raw data that we've grabbed. So we begin with acquiring data from an API. More specifically, we're going to make use of the requests library. This is a really great uh, Python library which allows you to very easily uh, make requests from an API and grab the data back in JSON format. Once we've done that once, we will scale it up to look at how we can systematically acquire data from that same API. So in this example, we're going to make use of the Open Weather APIs. So Open Weather is a great service that offers a bunch of different um, data products. Uh, in our case, we're going to look at making current measurements from cities. So we're going to ask at this time right now for this city, what's the weather doing? Now that service is free. They offer some historical data and other services that are not free. Um, so if you want to actually execute this alongside me, then you will need to go and get an API key, which is available for free. You just need to sign up through this link. I'll say a word about this API key. The purpose of this is just to monitor people's usage of the API so it doesn't get thrashed. There is a, a limit, I think it's 60 requests per minute and about 10,000 in total per day. Um, and by having that key, it means that the people who maintain the servers on open weather are able to kind of track the usage and if you've made too many requests, they'll block you so the servers don't get thrashed. What I've done is I've taken my API key and put it into a file called secrets.py. Um, I've created a variable in there called key and that's got the API key in it. You'll be able to see kind of an example to fill in your own API key in, in the code. And the point of that is I'm able to use that API key but without exposing it in this, in this video so no one can go and make use of the Open Weather API in my name. So I'd recommend that you do the same if you want to follow along. So other than the secrets, we've imported the typical uh, PyMongo, Mongo client, and also the requests library and a few other utilities that we're going to look at later. All right. We begin with asking what the weather is like now in London. So I'm going to define a variable called city with the value London, and this is my request string. And this is taken from the documentation of the Open Weather API. So this is my HTTP endpoint. Uh, this is the version number and I'm asking for the weather. My query, Q, is my city. So I'm passing in the city here and to validate that um, it needs to have my API key. So we have app ID and that's the second argument here. Go ahead and create that request string and this is the basic syntax for using the requests library request.get and then the request string. I'm going to capture that into this variable res and res gives me lots of useful information. So here are all of the possible things that can be returned here. 
Let's ask the status code and my HTTP return code is 200, which is great because 200 means everything is good. I'm gonna go ahead and pretty print to the screen the results of the JSON that's been returned from that request. So we get all of this nice information back. Um, I get the coordinates of London. This DT is a timestamp in Unix epoch format, which is basically the number of seconds since 1st of January 1970. We'll look at that again. We have an ID. Uh, this is the main temperature piece here. And we have humidity, pressure, temperature. We have temp max and temp min, which most likely is basically the precision of the weather station there. So we don't know exactly whether it's reading the right temperature. You see it says 279. That is, of course, measured in Kelvin. So 279 is about uh, 5 or 10 degrees. And we have all of this other information. So far, so good. So we have a way to grab this JSON data. So rather than doing requests one at a time, I'm going to define a function that takes a city name as an argument and returns back um, the results of requesting the data for that city. I'm going to call that get data. And I'm going to just check that that's working OK by asking what the weather is like in La Paz, in Bolivia. OK, and that function seems to be working, working OK. This is the basic pipeline for grabbing data from the Open Weather API.